In this video, we're going to look at some product management concepts. We're going to look at bundles, packages, assemblies, disassemblies, and product customization. So this video just explains the concepts. There are separate dedicated videos that show you how to actually implement these different structures in BrightPearl. First of all, let's take bundles. And what we're doing here is actually just combining the products when the product is sold. And the important thing here is that other customers can buy the component parts all the way up until the point that the bundle is actually sold. And when the bundle is sold, the inventory of the components is reserved. So here, for example, we've got a bundle which is a tennis racket plus balls. And when the customer buys the tennis racket with balls, the inventory of the racket and the balls are actually updated separately. And bundles are not actually stock track products. They don't have their own inventory level. The available quantity of a bundle is purely based on the inventory level of the component parts. Other examples of bundles include one we have here, the canoeing family pack. And this is to show that you can have a number of different quantities of components. So we've got the canoe and four life jackets, two paddles and a waterproof bag. We've also got the concept of buy one, get one free, which can be a bundle. So here we're pricing a bundle of two of component B simply at the price of one of component B. Effectively, that's buy one, get one free. And then cases of wine. So this is an example whereby you're actually selling a bundle of six bottles, but because the bottles can still be sold separately, it's a bundle. Well, the next type of product we have is an assembly. And sometimes this is called a bill of materials or manufacturing process. But the important difference between bundles and assemblies is that with an assembly, items can no longer be sold separately once you've built them. And what we're doing here is actually manufacturing a finished product from different component parts. In this particular example, we've got a wheel where we've got 32 spokes, a rim and a hub. And when the wheel is built, people can't buy the hub, spokes or rim separately anymore. If they did, you'd have to disassemble this product. Unlike bundles, assemblies have their own inventory level. So they're separate physical goods that once they're built, don't have any other dependencies on other products. Other examples of assemblies include, say, a projector with a cable, but this is only when the cable is actually built into the box or sealed into the box. And if you actually combine the cable with the projector at the point of sale, i.e. when someone checks out online or when you pack it, then it's a bundle. It's only an assembly when you're actually sealing it together in the box so that people can't buy the cable anymore. Another typical example of an assembly is a necklace, and the chain and pendant here are sold together. But it's not an assembly, if you actually build the necklace to order. So disassemblies are pretty much the same as an assembly, but it's the other way around. Typically when you're buying in bulk and selling in smaller quantities. And you'd use disassemblies when you want to track stock of both the bigger bulk item and also the smaller items. So as an example, we're buying pallets of 250 jars, which are then sold as boxes of 16. So you disassemble these, you'd reduce the quantity of the pallet and increase the quantity of the components or increase the quantity of the boxes. And then for the electronic components, you'd say buy packs of a thousand and spend time breaking them down into smaller packs of 10, maybe adding some branding or some packaging. Now custom packages is a different concept again. And this is where a customer is given a different choice of items to custom build into a finished product. And generally these items are combined at the point of sale, so you're not pre-building packages, they're custom and they're different for every single customer. So typically a retailer will define a number of different products that can be put into this package, and then when somebody buys one of each of these, they get a 10% or a 20% discount. The product itself usually has its own SKU too, which allows you to track sales and do some reporting based on which packages are bought versus which products are sold when they're not part of a package. A typical example of a custom package builder is a computer, where a customer can choose a motherboard, choose a processor, choose a hard drive, choose a case, and then once all of these products are combined, there's a fixed price of $400, and here we've got option D and option F that actually cost a little bit more if you've chosen them. We're including custom packages in this video because the inventory management of the package is essential. When somebody buys this package, the stock of the different components need to be updated or allocated properly. So when you connect your e-commerce channel to BrightPearl, and e-commerce is typically where custom packages occur, you need to make sure that it's done properly. Here's a typical example of a custom package builder online, where the user has to choose a snowboard, choose their bindings, choose boots, choose bag, and various optional accessories. 
When the product is bought, the right items need to be added to the sales order in BrightPearl and the inventory needs to be updated properly. And the final concept we're going to introduce in this video is customization. And this is where you have a base SKU that you do track stock of and then you modify it on a per order basis. So perhaps someone would send you an order for a pen with an engraving or maybe they're uploading a file that they want to print on a garment, maybe a t-shirt or hoodie or on a canvas, so maybe a photo they're uploading. Another example of customization is the cutting of a key to fit a lock. Now each of these customizations don't need their own SKU because the products don't need to be stock tracked. It's only the base item that's stock tracked. Unless you're actually building some of these or printing some of these or pre-cutting these before the sale is made. So maybe you're preempting a spike in sales and you want to build up a buffer of stock. In that situation, you would need a separate SKU for the customized product and a different SKU for each customization. So that's introduced the different concepts and the terminology. Each of these is covered in their own video, which shows you how to implement them in BrightPearl.